In ship constructor 2011 R2, non primary product hierarchies have undergone significant improvements that open a new range of powerful possibilities. The key improvement is the removal of the unit constraint from non primary product hierarchies. This improvement addresses the challenge of conflicting goals for navigator units. The conflicting goals are efficient work distribution using project split and merge, practical organization of project DWG files on the computer hard drive, accurate representation of the build strategy, optimal definition of areas where ship constructor relationships stretch continuously, and logical grouping of parts to facilitate production output. To understand the nature of the conflict, let's review the influence of navigator units on the project. Each navigator unit sets up boundaries that act as major dividers in the product hierarchy. Parts that belong to different units cannot share the same assembly in a hierarchy tree. In earlier ship constructor versions, this condition applies to all product hierarchies. Inability to aggregate parts that belong to different units inside one logical container makes generating reports and production drawings complicated. To ensure that required production output can be retrieved at all times, navigator units must be originally planned so that parts that are shown in the same reports and production drawings are not divided by the units. This setup, however, may conflict with the unit configuration that reflects the build strategy. Ship Constructor 2011R2 resolves conflicts among various goals of project units. In this version, the removal of the unit constraint from non-primary product hierarchy trees has segregated physical organization of the project from its multiple logical representations. On one side, navigator units and the primary product hierarchy are used to physically subdivide the project into largely independent portions that enable parallel work and ensure stable performance. On the other side, Non-primary product hierarchies are used to logically represent the project in a variety of ways. For example, in one non-primary product hierarchy, parts can be grouped to reflect the build strategy, while in another to calculate weights or describe finish application. These limitless possibilities for logical groupings of parts facilitate flexible production output in the new ship constructor release. In the second part of the presentation, we'll consider a practical engineering problem such as finding the location of the common center of gravity for two independent systems of pipe parts. In the model drawing that is currently opened, you can see pipe parts of two different colors. Each color represents an independent system. In addition to being members of independent systems, pipe parts are modeled in different units. To find out the location of the common center of gravity, I will undertake the following steps. I will add a new non-primary product hierarchy to my project. Then, I will be using the non-primary product hierarchy to aggregate all of the pipe parts inside one hierarchical group. Once all of the pipe parts are assembled together inside one logical container, I will be able to easily retrieve the location of the common center of gravity. Now, let's do it. I'm adding the new product hierarchy tree. Let's take a moment to have a look at the new non-primary product hierarchy tree. As you can see, this product hierarchy tree is free of any isolated groups such as navigator units. It is only the primary product hierarchy that is still segregated by units. Now let's have a look at what happens to non-primary product hierarchy trees in projects that were updated from previous ship constructor versions to ship constructor 2011R2. After you update your project to ship constructor 2011R2, navigator units in non-primary product hierarchy trees will be automatically converted into regular product hierarchy groups. Let's finish the task of finding the location of the common center of gravity. As I have already mentioned, the parts must be aggregated together inside one group in the non-primary product hierarchy tree. Let's add a new assembly where we will be aggregating the parts together.
To quickly find the current location of the pipe parts in the product hierarchy tree, all I need to do is just to select the part in the model space. Ship Constructor will automatically open an assembly to which the part belongs. As we can see, all of the pipe parts by default were placed into the unspooled pipe assembly when we created a new non-primary product hierarchy tree. Each non-primary product hierarchy consists of several default containers among which the parts are distributed in the beginning. Because all of the pipe parts in my project are unspooled, it is logical that I found them in the unspooled pipe assembly. Now I'm just going to move them to a different group. As long as the pipe parts are allocated inside a hierarchical group where they don't interfere with other parts, I can retrieve the location of the common center of gravity for the entire group. There are several ways to do it. The location of the common center of gravity can be displayed in reports, in BOM tables, or just in an assembly properties. If I right-click the name of the group and select Properties, I will see the location of the common center of gravity, CG point. For more information about Ship Constructor 2011 R2, please visit us at www.shipconstructor.com.